Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hello. another episode of Shoes Off Inside. And as you can see, it's just me and Tamlin Tamita. No Kelly Who. moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what happens. So we always schedule our recordings, right, with the three of us. And sometimes it's like herding cats, right, to be it able is, to schedule. It is, So wow, we, wow. there's like text messages going back and forth and emails going back and forth and my intern is trying to, you know, herd us all together. So there was a little bit of a mix-up in times today for our recording. So Kelly yeah. is frantically trying to get ready, but it's not going to be in time. So we decided but she, to- that, 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 That's the thing. It's like, I think she just needs to get her cup of coffee because I'm sure she's the kind that, that just rolls out of the bed, you know, and she just lets her hair down. She goes, okay, I'm ready. Cause you know, she she's just so that. beautiful inside and out. Inside. No, but, but it's she, like, what do you, it's like, yeah, yeah. She admits that she's not a morning person. And so she- Yes, time, as none of us are. As none of us are. And so I was, we were, Tamla and I were talking before we started recording. It's just like, woo, it's, this is a little bit early. I know. How many cups of coffee have you had already? It's like, I know I've had, I've had two of these and I still was just like, I couldn't speak at one point. I'm like, I can't find the word. So anyway, so forgive us if we seem a little foggy and again, in Kelly's absence, we're just going to continue because we have a tight schedule today with some other stuff to do. But um, anyway, so how are you Tamlin besides being a little groggy in the morning? (laughs) Well, that's why I need a little music sometimes in the kitchen. And it's usually like the 70s Motown or, you know, 80s pop music, you know, just to get the blood moving. Uh, It it is. It's just that luxury to be able to, you know, dance around in the morning. I don't have kids. I have pets to take care of. But again, you know, just get the the rush of blood going into your system. You know what? But uh, hats off to all parents, you know, uh, and and getting the kids out the door uh, to school and especially during summertime as well. Exactly. But uh, yeah. How are things with you, Miss Lee? Well, I mean, I was just going to say I I should take an example from you of listening to fun music in the morning because what? What do yeah. I do? Of course, I turn on the news immediately. You turn on the news, which is I, so bad. You're a news junkie, a news. Yeah, I know I news, am, yeah. but it's so bad to start the day. I don't know why I do that. And when I do it, I consciously say, to, like, think, why are you turning on the news first thing in the morning? I know first it's thing in bad. the morning. Yeah, and but yeah. I, and yet yeah. I do because it. it's, it's just terrible. it's those drugs of information, you know, that 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 get, settles into you. But again, you know, like everything, we all need to find balance. We need to find that, it's true. you know, that area of life where you can just go into and indulge and, and just feel a little better, feel a little bit more goofy or, you know, like a doofus kind of thing. So it, it's, it's, but yeah, I, I agree with you. It's like the constant uh, diet of news and information because we want to be informed. We want to know what's happening in the world. Yeah. We want to know what's next. Yep. It is is addicting, but you, we do have to counter it with some... Yeah, with some kind of ice cream dessert of, you know, uh, of I know, I know. whatever it is that turns you on. And it's it's like to counter the shit show that seems to be every day. So, uh, yes. yeah, 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 I know. I know yes. Not to bring this conversation down, but yes. it is. So, yes, you're right. Finding the balance for sure. So how else am I doing? I, I'm, I'm, a li- I, I, I'm a little stressed because I don't know if a lot of our listeners or viewers know, but I've been an uh, adjunct um, at USC for since 2018 teaching journalism, yes. right? And so, but I was hired by Chapman yes. University to go full time. Now, that's not saying that I'm going to let go of, like my media stuff, like the show. Of course, I'm going to continue the work, but I'm going to be a full time professor at Chapman University, and we start at the end of August. And I'm kind of stressed out. Because yeah, it's a full because load. of the topics that you're or the subjects that you're going to be teaching, because it's super interesting how you're going to be transitioning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's from in this world of journalism. Well, right now, what we're talking about is traditional media versus new media, right? Multimedia right. and social media and digital media. And so it's a lot to take on to try to teach these young minds. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going to be teaching undergrads, all undergrads this time. At USC, it was a combination of graduate students and undergrads. Oh, okay. I didn't know the difference. I forgot yeah. about that. Yes. Right. Okay. At okay. Chapman, they don't have a graduate program for journalism. They, it's just undergrad. Uh, okay. And so, you know, I mean, these are much younger students uh, who right. may not right. really know exactly what they're doing or if they even want to go into journalism or something else. So. Because news is changing. I mean, we're all talking about news. What is news? What is fake news? Disinformation, exactly. misinformation, facts versus truth, alternative facts. Right. So I, I'm sure they have a lot to digest, but you know, yeah. they have 
a wealth of information as to what what is scaring you about the the um, the you subject know, matter. I think I think it's overwhelming for me on a couple of fronts. One is the load. The course load is much heavier for me than than as an adjunct. An adjunct as is part time, yeah, right? Right. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, we don't teach mm-hmm. that many classes. When you're full time, it's it's a full load of like three yeah. or four courses a semester. Um, right. And then the second thing is I'm such a perfectionist that I'm walking into this going, okay, I want to improve and elevate these courses. And so I'm, you know, instead of just gliding in, um, right. I'm saying, oh, I need to like make this syllabus stronger and I want to, you know, create, you know, sort of stronger program and this and that. I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, this is typical of what I do. So of I how, need you, to, of how yeah. you do it because, you know, you're building a story, you introduce it. You yeah. elucidate all the points, you know, and then you come up to a yeah. conclusion and, or, or the, 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 the takeaway, as we say. Here's actually the major responsibility that I feel, and this is this is the way I teach. I care so much about the students paying so much money. Their parents are, or or you know, they're getting a grant or school. I really do. I care so much about how much tuition is costing that I yes. feel responsible. They better get a fucking good education. Yeah, and I'm yeah. going There's to provide There's something about, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I take responsibility. And I know some educators really don't, but I really do. I could give it's a, a shit. It's a paycheck. You know, yeah. what are you delivering? Yeah. What, are you, what, ch- are, what, what is your checking, legacy? I'm yeah. not what is your legacy and checking in terms out, of? And I'm yeah. not just saying whatever, you know, I really care uh, about what yeah. the student is going to walk away from. And so that that's a heavy responsibility because, you know, these are people you're these are young minds you're dealing with this is not yeah, like yeah but, but what, what you're doing is is you're actually practicing and exercising but the word you know what, what we were talking about before is about ethics yeah you know and what is truth and what do you want to pass along right to better you know the the, the next generation the ones who are following behind us and it's a that's responsibility. and it's, it's something that you care about because it's the it's the world that you're leaving behind and right. it, it just goes, goes hand in hand as to how they can pick up these tools that you've been using for all these years and how to best use them for the benefit of all of us and not just a a paycheck. So come on, let's get down to brass tacks. It's, you know, it's not sincere, you know, sincerely just gliding in. You really care about what you're leaving behind. So kudos to you, Ms. Lee. It's like, yeah. It's stressing me out though. I'm getting more gray hairs because of it. (laughs) (laughs) But it's beautiful. It's the silver sisters. It's like, (laughs) exactly. And it's shiny. And it's reflecting light. Exactly. So, you know, you don't need to. Uh, oh, yeah, gosh. Yeah. Well, so speaking of balance, because I'm so stressed out about like the real world and, you know, this new job, um, sometimes we need the escape, right? Like yes. you're saying through music and through entertainment, things yes. like that. And so this episode, we have a very special guest. And yes, that is do. Helen Park, who Yay. was the composer of K pop, the Broadway yes. show all about K-pop, um, obviously. Um, and so she wa- was the first Asian American woman to be nominated for a Tony award or a Tony award yes. um, for composing, composing. Right? Yeah. And that is a big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the toughest categories because as we know, Broadway is a lot about musicals and songwriting and composing. And it's about money. And it's about it's money. About money the sto- yeah. It's about yeah. the story. Yeah. So yeah. we d- decided to talk to Helen um, and uh, we recorded this uh, episode right after the Tony awards. And so she, unfortunately, that's right. Two she, days after. Yeah, that's right. She did not yeah. win, but we didn't give a shit because the fact that she was nominated at, she's only 37. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and the peerage that she has, you know, yes. in terms of all the, the better known Broadway hits, as they say, right. Right. as, as how she was mentored and how she looks forward to collaborating and working. And she has a bona fide name out there that people know about yeah. and are excited to work alongside with. And that's, the, that's, that's, I mean, the fact that uh, she is now representing as, as we know, um, and um, maybe some of the folks who are listening right now or watching may not know, K-pop unfortunately closed very quickly after it opened. It uh, closed after two weeks. And so right. it was a, right. you know, it was, it was a financial issue. It was a marketing issue. It was a c- c- several different things. But I g- was very fortunate to see it before it closed, not knowing it was going to close. And it's right, fantastic. right, because right. you were so excited to see it. Yeah, it was, it was like, was, I got to get out there. It was fantastic. Yeah. And when we talked to Helen, I couldn't believe that she's only 37 and she's so talented and gifted. And I'm so 
looking forward to what she's going to be doing. Yeah, in the future. it's absolutely not the end of her. No, not no. the end of her. Yeah, so at all. We'll, yeah. let's get into this uh, interview and then we'll meet you guys on the backside of it. Helen, welcome to Shoes Off Inside. So good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> First and foremost, congratulations. Congratulations. On the Tony oh nomination. God. Do, do tell, I mean, tell us, tell us first of all, what it was like to be at the Tony Awards um, as a nominee. I mean, that must yes. have been an extraordinary experience. Working backwards. Yeah. It's like, what, what, yeah. what was that like to be in that room with no writers? Oh, wait, right? exactly. No, no, we'll, writers we'll get into all. that for a second, but tell us yeah. just what and that feeling was like for you. Yeah. I mean, it was my first Tony Awards experience. It was surreal and you know like I went full out like you know I had like my glam squad <laughs> like, you I know, saw that amazing Korean American designer Andrew Kwan he designed well it's, it wasn't like custom made for me but he had this like amazingly designed dress that I got to wear okay let's um, talk yes yeah like Look, Tamlin's, okay Tamlin's holding it up it, it was gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> He's incredible. Like, oh and you know, God. it meant a lot because the show um, that I was representing at Tony Awards was, you know, K-pop and it's Korean pop. And so it meant a lot to work with, you know, a Korean American designer yeah. um, who's just like iconic. And, um, and then, yeah, my jewelry was designed by Mimi So, and she's like also like this badass Asian American <laughs> designer. So it was like, just, I felt like it's just so fitting. Um, yeah. And yeah. I was like, I am going to just go full out All unapologetically. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Good for to you. Represent the whole gamut of what it meant yeah. to be Korean, Korean American with a Korean American show. It was like, it was just you know to to be Asian American and just see the whole embrace of Korean and Korean American culture was just so uh, fantastic. Substantial, yeah. you know, it was just like yeah, it was so like, real. Yeah, it was like shoes off Broadway. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> um, yeah, it was just it was really yeah really fun. So tell us though, Helen. I mean, you know. Of course, being there and being all glammed out, that's part of it. But the nomination and just being there with all your fellow nominees and such talent. I always say this, and I really feel very strongly about this. I really do think that theatrical performers are the most talented because yeah. they have to sing and dance and act every mm -hmm. night, eight times every a week, week. right? Yeah. That is, yeah. that is an extraordinary feat. And then someone like you who composes an entire musical, I don't even know how you do that. So yeah. again, t describe the feeling of being there with all of these other very talented people honoring each other in, in the way that you do in the, t at the Tonys. Yeah. It was like such an, such an encouragement, I think for me to see that Broadway is now truly um, truly going forward, like, um, it's actually, uh, embracing diversity in a way that is not just cliche. It's not about hiring a couple actors. It's really mm -hmm. also, um, telling stories from the perspective of, you know, various cultures and, uh, you know, people like me, I'm from Korea and, uh, you know, I have a very different background than other people. And mm -hmm. I get to tell a story story in this in this you know medium where I love musical theater all my life but I just didn't even imagine or dream of becoming a Broadway composer because yeah. there literally was nobody like I was like I have to look like or be like Jewish like Richard Rogers <laughs> you know I thought I had to be like yeah. a white man right um, and I just um but it was just weird because like I didn't because I didn't dare to really dream to be a Broadway composer, um, when this show came about a long time ago uh, for my, the off-Broadway production, yeah. this wasn't really my goal. My goal was to like honor my culture, and mm -hmm. somehow that sort of led um, led to this um, ultimately. And um, yeah, I just was very, very encouraged and and honored. Um, and, you know, it was really a whole full circle moment because uh, I used to work 
as a music assistant to the composer Tom Kitt um, uh, back in 2013. So from 2013 to 2016, I actually worked for Tom Kitt on various projects, starting with If Then and um, mm-hmm. some workshops of like SpongeBob and uh, and uh, yeah. He was also a fellow nominee on this in this oh, Tony Awards. Oh my God. Oh, right. Famous. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and I sat behind him and oh, you know, wow. just like and he's such a great supporter of mine. Like he's so proud of me. And oh, yeah, that's gosh. one of the things he oh. said to me during the awards. He was like, I'm I'm so proud of you. Oh my gosh. And oh, it, yeah, it was like such a special moment and just to be alongside Tom yeah. Kidd. Yeah. And uh, Jean Tesori yeah. and, um, you yeah. know, yeah. everyone, like, I just, I have such respect for them. Yeah. I, I think what's also special is that you're a woman, you're a young woman, you're a Korean American woman. You're wearing all those, you know, medals and badges and go, here I am representing all of us. But then, you know, the, the check-in for you must be, and I'm Helen Park, you know, the, the idea. It's like, we're just so proud. Yeah. We're just so proud. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Helen, um, you brought up the representation um, aspect, which um, I noticed when I was watching the Tony Awards. It was like, wow, look at all the diversity on stage, the performers, the nominees. But let me ask you this, and I I have to say, I I also noticed this. Um, Really, none of the, only a few of the winners were people of color, even though some of the categories, it was like one white actor and then three or four, you know, African-American nominees. It, I don't know. Did you notice that during the ceremony? Did anybody else talk about that? Or was that something that was not really, you know, kind of touched upon? Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of observed that. I mean, compared to how many people of color were nominated, yeah. I think the yeah. winners were mostly white. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, though, a lot of people uh, sort of focus on what was still positive, which was that a lot of non-binary folks were uh, rewarded uh, right. rewarded as winners this right. this time around, and that was something that was very uh, you know very new and and such a positive change. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. I agree that um, especially this you know the play a- ain't no mo got like so many nominations. Right. But That's you know, hard. but here's the thing. I think uh, you know our show K-pop ran for a really short amount of of time, like after opening it closed, um, after only 14 performances and, um, or 17 performances. And Helen, and, uh, I saw one of them. Uh, <laughs> I came, I was, yeah. I came to New York and I actually yeah. saw, yeah. saw yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so it was, but, that, it was fantastic. My God, we can, we're going to talk about it, but yes, go ahead. You were saying it closed really quickly, but. Uh, yeah. And so, um, people who are nominating, for the Tony Awards, it's a small group of people and they're required to see all the shows. Um, Yep. You know, obviously, like you have to see all the shows in order to like, you know, fairly nominate. Uh, Yeah. But, um, but the Tony voters, they're like 800 plus people. There are so many people and they're not like required to see all the shows. They're expected to, but like, you know, of course there's no, uh, you know, and like actually, like a there's no like police or you know, yeah, there's, there's no, no one who's actually it. making sure that everybody saw right. um, all the shows. Right. And obviously, something like K-pop, there's a possibility that not everyone were, got to see the show. Yeah. And yeah. so I, um, I definitely think that it's it's still a validation um, of you know shows like Ain't No Mo and K-pop. Like even though it closed early, you know that is, you know that is not. Um, indicative of the impact it had or the quality of the work, you know? Yes, exactly. So, yeah. 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 You could take pride in the, in the life that it did have on Broadway and beyond and that it yes. got that kind of recognition and that kind of word of mouth that it passed around to, to folks to, you know, to see the ability to tell these kinds of stories on, you know, the great white way. Yeah, and, exactly. you know, I'm just so sorry that I missed it. I'm just so glad that May got to see it. Oh, my God. So let me let me tell you. OK, let me tell you about my K-pop yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Uh, because I knew Julie Lee, uh, one of the one of the actors in the in the uh, play. But um, I went to see it with my now fiance, who is not Asian, 
Uh, and he is not a musical theater fan. He came with me. He loved it. I mean, I loved it. He loved it. He was like, that was so good. I can't even believe it. I mean, yeah. so yeah. it really yeah. did speak to a, a, a bigger crowd and a b- bigger audience than, than people thought it would. Um, it was so innovative. It's so creative. The music, and I'm not just saying this to you, Helen, because you were the composer. The music, <laughs> the music was incredible. It really was incredible. So here's my question to you. Are are there any plans to like take it elsewhere? Yeah, like what, bring what, it to what, LA. What is the word? LA. Yeah, I mean, I think um there's definitely plans um of doing a version of it elsewhere. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be the same version because I think there is a possibility possibility of maybe shortening the length, you know, make it a little bit more of a concert form or, you know, just like maybe slightly different version of it so that we can you, we can do it in so many different places is, yeah. um, and it doesn't have to be confi- confined to the like, you know, round yeah. um, type yeah. of theater. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. But that's totally you know, doable. That's nothing, nothing's set. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned. That, uh, in other words, stay tuned because I think you would do it phenomenally well in other places, uh, especially here in LA. I think especially you would have yeah, here there's in such LA. a big oh K-pop fan base in LA Huge. and so much more so than New York. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. if, if I, let's get into sort of the, um, the development of, of, of K-pop. And, um, we want to just mention the fact that yes, you're Korean American, um, of both cultures, right? You, yes. you you're were born, born and Korea, raised yeah, born in, in Korea, in right? Korea, right? In Busan. Um, yeah. and then your first introduction to musical theater was when you went to a camp in Virginia in elementary school. Is that right? A musical yeah. theater <laughs> camp. And you fell in love with musical theater at that time. But I'm sure as a Korean kid, you were thinking, like you were saying, there's no way I could ever do this for a living. It's just something fun that I love. But something was, obviously a seed was planted for you back then. Yeah. Uh, when I was in second grade, uh, I went to Missouri to live there for two years. And that was one, like my first American experience. Okay. Uh, my dad was uh, studying life ethics at the time at the uh, um I forgot what school in St. Uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. And okay. um, uh, so I lived there for two years. Uh, first year I lived in St. Louis and second year I lived in Columbia, Missouri. And um, after that, I went back to Korea and I just like missed American culture so much. Like I just missed how like people are just like so open, you know, just like with their emotions. Like every, you know, everyone's like, blah, like, hey, how are you? <laughs> you know, whereas in Korean, it's like, Hello. Yeah, like it's very much more like subdued. And, yes. uh, uh, and also like at that age, like when I went back, I was like in fifth grade and everybody were just like, you know, all just all about being cool and like, you know, not, about, you know, not over exaggerating and right. expressive. And I was like super expressive after my experience in America. So <laughs> I asked my parents, like, can I please, can I please go back to America? Um, and, you know, they had no plans to go back. They were, they had jobs in Korea. And so uh, my aunt at the time was living in Virginia. And um, so I went to her place uh, for a summer in sixth grade. And I did musical theater summer camp there. And mm-hmm. they did um, a Once Upon a Mattress school mm-hmm. production mm-hmm. Yeah. of Once Upon a Mattress. And I love that show so much. <laughs> Uh, I poured like my everything into it. Like I played a uh, minstrel, you know, <laughs> the minstrel, um, you know, I, yeah, I guess that was fitting for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, so, uh, so into it. I memorized the whole score and like, I was just living in it. Like every day from morning to night, I would just sing the whole score all the time. Aww. And so the photo that I posted the other day, um, and yeah, it's like floating around in the internet with like, I sent, I, I included that in like a interview with Vogue as well. But I, um, there's a photo where everyone is looking at the camera, just like smiling, like, oh yeah, it's another year of summer camp. Like, <laughs> we'll be back next year, like no big deal. And I'm at the very end, like sobbing because <laughs> oh, oh, no. the last day yes, yes. of our performances and oh. I have to go back to Korea. But like I said, I was like, okay, I guess I'll have to be 
an actress? Like, do I even have, do I have, you know, the skills and do like, it's going to be so competitive. Like, I don't know if that's even going to be possible, but I thought that that is the only way I can actually be a part of musical theater. Mm -hmm. I think that there were other roles possible and also, you know, Asian roles were very rare as well. So it was totally just like, uh, an impossible sort of, you know, impossible dream. So I didn't really pursue musical theater. Like I, I wanted to, but when I came back to Korea, um, I, I started just, you know, studying to become a doctor. Like my dad's a doctor. And so I just, I thought I would just like follow his footsteps and just do music. I mean, Helen, hobby, I, it's you know. so typical, right? I, I was pre-med, I was pre-med too. Oh I mean, yeah. You know, so it's, yeah. it's like the standard road that we think we're supposed to take because yeah, we can't yeah, even yeah. imagine wh- why, because we've never seen that kind of representation in that field. Right. So yeah. you didn't really see it in musical theater. I didn't see it in the media, you know, so we couldn't even imagine it for ourselves, but something it's in you, stupid, you know, but, yeah, yeah but something in you <laughs> said, uh, I'm going to do it anyway, somehow. Uh, Helen, were, were, were you and May, actually, were you also trained in music? I mean, did you have to take piano or violin or an instrument when you're growing up? Because that's, you know, going thinking about becoming an actor or a performer in a musical is one thing, but to go into music, that's even more rigorous. So where, where, yeah. where did the music come from into your life? Well, I started playing the piano when I was five years old, actually four years old, four years old, you know, that's yeah. also typical. That's, that's yeah. typical. Yeah. Yeah, 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 typical. But you know, <laughs> my mom um, really wanted to play the piano when she was growing up. So she had oh. high hopes for me to become a concert yeah. pianist. Uh, and I remember yeah. like, I, I, I actually loved it. Um, I have a younger sister and a younger brother and my mom wanted to make us like a trio. So I would play the <laughs> piano. My sister would play the violin. My brother would play the cello. Oh my um, gosh. But I was the only one who actually stuck to it because my siblings, they were just like, like they hated it. it. Like it's <laughs> like, we're like, we're done. Yeah. Here, Thank like, you, mom. Yes, 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 yes. In the vid- home videos and photos, you can see how like they're just miserable. <laughs> um, but I stuck to it. And when we went to... Missouri, that's when my parents were like, I mean, my mom was so, you know, serious about me, you know, going that route. So um, I went on the Missouri state competition. Um, and on the first year that I I uh, went on that competition, I got third place. And my mom was like, whoa, okay, she might have something. Like she, she might have something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, She's and real so it was like a really great time. I was like happy. Like after coming back home from the competition, I was like so happy. But the next year, I went on again. And, you know, my mom was like super ambitious then. And um, <laughs> I got second place. Oh. And that didn't go over very well. It wasn't good like, enough. <laughs> my mom was like, of course. Hey, if oh, you wow. for one uh, in Missouri, you're not going to be, you're, you're, you have no hope to become Wait. like a world-class concert. Helen, oh Helen so, you're, you're reminding me of, a, I'm going to share the story with you because it's so similar. So I started playing piano at five as well, classically trained, just like we all are, right? We're supposed to. I went to a national competition, AMSA. Okay, American Music Scholarship or something like that. Yeah, um, oh, really? I tied. <laughs> I tied for first in my division. Okay. okay. Oh wow. Tied. I tied. <laughs> and your mom. <laughs> my mom was mom like, say, Come on, "Yeah, my mom was like, yeah, you tied for first." Oh, that was it. Oh my god. So I get it. I totally get it. I mean, she was proud of me, but oh my God. but it came back to bite me because later on she was like, "Yeah, you tied. You didn't. You didn't. You win. tied. Yeah, yeah, yeah." Yes. Okay, but obviously, okay. So obviously, your mom was not pleased that you didn't get first. But so, did that deter you? I mean, what happened? Yeah. So from then on, my mom was like, "Okay, you can go swimming and you could do whatever." You- <laughs> You know, she was like, music is a hobby. Um, and oh. so I think that kind of took some pressure off my shoulders. And yeah. I 
you know, I was exposed to uh, Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, like all oh, like all these pop music, yeah, pop, yeah. Yeah. jazz yeah. and gospel, like and you know, and so I was able to explore more like pop style music um, after that. And um, so, yeah, I still played classical piano, but it was definitely not for. Um, you know, for winning, <laughs> um, yeah. it, like becoming number one in the world. Right. Uh, and I don't know, for some reason, I, I really did not love practicing like one bar, like a thousand times. Yeah, like I, 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 I love just like exploring new pieces. Like I just love like sight reading new, you know, uh, yeah, new pieces of music. And, um, and so I, I was able to do that from then on because my mom didn't expect anything from me anymore. <laughs> you, so, so Helen, you said you you were you were listening into like Michael Jackson and, and other American pop R and B and soul artists, but at the same time, growing up because you're from Korea, was the, did you did you also were you also exposed to Korean pop music at the time growing up and seeing that kind of evolution and how the influences probably crossed the oceans? It's like listening to more American sounds and listening to more Korean sounds. Was that in your background as well? Because you know that's that. That's the idea is like, where did the idea and how did K-pop, you know, the genre become so explosive? Yeah, I mean, I I have a unique family in that um, they're very religious. And so when I was uh, growing up, um, we mostly listened to like classical music or church music. Yeah. And I wasn't super exposed to K-pop music until I was in um, fourth grade. Um okay. Uh, when I actually fifth grade, when I came back from the States, um, my, uh, I remember one time I was at the express bus terminal (laughs) in Korea. Uh, they have all these shops that have like cassette tapes and, you know, albums that they were selling. And, um, I remember the first, I remember the first album that I bought was Lula, this, um, two boy, two women, uh, group. Uh, and I just bought their fourth album. And I remember bringing that back home and my ba- my dad was like, let's listen to it together. Oh. I want to hear what the lyrics are about because I don't want, you know, it to have like really harmful, you know, influence on you. And that. so like we, you know, he's, he's like the most angelic guy. <laughs> like, yeah, he wasn't, he's not super strict, um, but he was definitely concerned <laughs> uh, about me listening to Tommy. Yeah. yeah. So we listened together and he was like, hmm. It's all about love. <laughs> okay. And then, so yeah, from then on, like I, I got into K-pop music and then, you know, because I missed America so much, mm-hmm. uh, my parents actually sent me to a boarding school in Canada um, for high school. So I went there when I was um, in ninth grade um, and there the rules were also very strict. Like you're not yes. supposed to listen to secular music right. and um, so what I did was like, I brought all these like K-pop albums, like, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was the CD era. So like I had all these like CDs that I brought back from, brought from Korea and I would just listen to them and nobody can say anything nobody because knew. Oh it's my all in God. Korean. Okay, so they don't hilarious. know if it's secular or not. Right. Um, Wait, K-pop Helen. music was like such a big part of my life. Like, yeah. you know especially during the high school years. Um, that was like all I listened to. Yeah. And um, it also reminded me of home. And, you know, it, I felt like, like I'm still connected to Korea. So because of your love of K-pop uh, throughout the years, that obviously led you to write about K-pop um, and come up with this amazing musical. Amazing so musical, yeah. The process of that, tell us like, how long that was and how you came up with the music and the songs, because it's all great. I mean, it's all amazing. I mean, yeah, I, I started working on the show in 2014, um, spring. And, um, I had already written a lot of like K-pop style songs before. Um, it actually, um, happened so that, uh, so I was, in the NYU musical theater writing program. And a lot of my, you know, uh, yeah, my friends at college, they all have heard my K-pop songs. And so, uh, yeah, word spread and Ars Nova, uh, when they were, 
planning on this immersive K-pop show. They were looking for composers and uh, I met with the director and um, yeah, I was able to get on board. Uh, when I started working towards the uh, the off-Broadway production, which was supposed to be an immersive uh, mm -hmm. theater piece um, mm -hmm. where the audience move room to room to experience mm -hmm. the story. And uh, back then in 2014, like Psy, Psy was like, you know, the big famous K-pop artist. And other than that, not a lot of K-pop artists were known. Um, and it was just before BTS really blew up in the US. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was like such a success globally, but somehow in America, K-pop wasn't like a huge mainstream thing. And so um, my goal was like to, to show the K-pop that I know. As we were developing the story, um, I think it was like more of a collaboration, uh, sort of how to create the subtext through a very pop structured song. Um, and this was very intentional. Ars Nova really wanted me to write the music in the authentic K-pop structure mm -hmm. because the conceit was that the audience would come in and feel like they're actually in a K-pop label experiencing actual K-pop stars and their backstage journey, you know, all the backstage drama. Yeah. And, uh -huh. um, and so, and the music was supposed to make it feel like you're in a music video. Yes. For example, there's this one song that's called wind up doll. And, um, it's basically kind of like, it's like basically saying I'm a wind up doll for you. And it's very happy. So you know how like in like Britney Spears, like I'm a slave for you. It's like, like it's just like erotic, like super sexual and like, you know, um, it's enticing and whatnot. And, you know, wind up doll too. It's like, you know, it's a disco pop song where I'm like, I'm wind up doll, you know, like I'll do anything for you. Mm -hmm. But it was actually in the story's context. It was, um, that she was literally like, just like a puppet, you know, like they're mm -hmm. the label is so con in control of her yeah. that mm -hmm. everything is choreographed. You know, you bring up a really good point, which is what I liked about K-pop and the story is that it wasn't just happy. Everything was shiny and, you know, lovely and perfect. It actually does talk about the backstory of what goes on behind the scenes and the pressure, the enormous right. pressure that these groups and these artists are under by the label, by the marketing team and all that. And we hear about these stories as well in reality. And that's why there's, a, you know, some suicides that go on in Korea, you know, the, the tremendous pressure is too much. So do you think that that's something that needs to be addressed more in the K-pop world as well as just general entertainment in Korea? Oh, for wow. sure, because that's something that I think people are still struggling with because yeah. of the pressure, right? Yeah, like Korea, um, the entertainment business, but all the other, um, you know, even like in, in education, yeah. there's this pressure of um, everyone going towards the same goal. Yeah. So you're always right. comparing yourself to someone else. And I think obviously that it, that leads to, you know, just low self-esteem and depression. And so a lot of there's a lot. Yeah, there's a high suicide rate in Korea. And I think part of it is like this competitiveness and also obsession um, for perfection. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's like you you like I think there's like, you know, the obsession for like plastic surgery. I think that also stems from you have to be prettier than someone else. Mm -hmm. You have to be like so like better than someone else in order yeah. to survive. Um, and I think so that's why when I was working on the music for this show, I really tried to uh, break that stereotype of the music just being simple and lazy, you know, just because it has to be catchy. It's, it's, it's not like, you know, it's not like you, you get high one day and you just like go like, you know, just like sing one syllable like dee, 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 like in that and then call it K-pop, you know, <laughs> because I know the brutal competition yeah. and obsession yeah. towards perfectionism and also making this a real profitable product. Right. Um, that's like the focus of all these labels in Korea. But the show shows the that darker side. Which I appreciate. Right. I think that was very good because it was like it's it's not K-pop is not perfect. 
Right. right? There mm-hmm. is a darker mm-hmm. side behind the curtain, right? That a lot of people aren't aware of. And I appreciated the fact that this story incorporated that. And so that more people are aware of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in order to d- create that dissonance, like the, the songs had to feel like, you know, real K-pop songs, yeah. you know, like if it, if it, if the song sounds lazy, then the, the whole theme of like the dark obsession for perfectionism is kind of a joke. You know what I mean? It's, it's like kind of lost yeah. for that kind of song. It's writing a, K- a pop song is really easy. You know, you just like play um, and, you know, put in your really sick yeah. beats and like, yeah, just like, have your line. Yeah. 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 yeah, and everyone like this it's gonna be inarguably a pop song. But um in order for this particular story to work, it had to, you know, it ha- you know, the boy band's debut song had to feel like a debut song for a boy band, you know, and like the girl group's um empowerment song, it had to feel like something that you might see like you know, a black pink performance. It and did. So, I mean, they um, did. I, I ain't no K-pop okay. expert, but all the songs <laughs> felt totally authentic, like authentically K-pop for sure. And it felt like a, a concert um, or like we were in a video, um, the way in which it was performed and the lighting and all of that. I, it was, it was, really was so well done. So yeah, um, yeah. May May was just so thrilled, and she was, was so raving. stoked coming and telling us what the what the whole show was about. I, I mean, was. she was floating on oh, on air. You know, it was it was just amazing, yeah. and it just made us miss. You know, just like, oh my god, we missed the opportunity. It, the, the, yeah, it I mean, be, be immersed in your world. Yeah, I mean, we we definitely cut a lot of songs, and so all of the cut songs, um, or not all of them, but a lot of them were played during the pre-show. Part. So, like, oh. when people were, you know, coming into the theater, um, yeah, you could hear, like, my voice, my demos in the background. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know that. Um, okay. okay. Well, well, talking about the music, I mean, is there, I, it's, a, it's kind of a, like a, a, a fan question. Is there, a, a, is there pl- are there plans for a K-pop album? Cast oh, album? Oh, yeah. They recorded yeah, it's one. out now. It actually released... Um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. And so, yeah, it's platforms. Yeah. I think, um, I think it is a good representation of, of the song, even though it's not the full song, full show. Um, I think there's, yeah, all of the songs are in there. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a good, I have to say, if I say so myself, I think it's like a good album to, you know, work out to. <laughs> it. like, it's your baby. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah I could totally yeah. see that too. I was very excited when I saw that you guys were uh, cutting the album uh, because yeah. I was like, oh man, they need to do something with this music. So congratulations yeah. on that. Um, Helen, what is next for you? Because um, I remember seeing a clip. I think this was a pre-Tony gathering of some kind and Lin-Manuel Miranda was speaking and he pointed you out and said, Helen Park nominee. Uh He's like, please don't stop composing. Uh He's like, you can go and make a lot of money doing something else and being a star. But he's like, please keep writing for Broadway. I thought that was such a great moment. Yeah. Wonderful shout out, right? It's like validation. Seriously, great shout out. So, so what's he's next been such you? a great support. Like, oh. um, I messaged him during K-pop because um, yeah, we know each other from from before, and he was such a fan of um, the off Broadway version of K-pop as well. And so I messaged him. I was like, "Come check our show out before it closes." Oh. Um, and uh, he was in Puerto Rico, uh, and he just he flew in uh, a day earlier to see oh. the show. Oh, yeah, he's that's such a awesome. great supporter, and like you know, he was one of the reasons why. I felt like I could write musical theater, actually. Um, I actually put that in my application for NYU. Um, I thought the way that he fused his cultural sound with musical theater structure um, and creating something so unique, like it was, it felt encouraging to me that, you know, I have all these different backgrounds, musical backgrounds and cultural mm-hmm. backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I don't have to really uh, be self-conscious about that. I can actually bring all of that in and make something completely unique. And I think Lin Miranda was like definitely someone who showed me that example. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, that was so special that he um, 
that he gave me that shout out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm working on um, a couple of stage productions, but also um, a TV and film. Um, Cause I also have um, an animated movie that I did uh, before K-pop Broadway, um, which is a, uh, it's a Netflix animation called over the moon. And it's, um, it's, a uh, yeah, it's like, it's an animated movie. And, um, cool. and I wrote songs for that. Um, oh, wow. and, uh, That's uh Janet over the moon. Yes. 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 Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, the songs. I and, love uh, that. Yeah. And, uh, so that, you know, opened my eyes, um, to, uh, you know, my love for animation and the process of creating, um, yeah, animated movies and children's, um, you know, children's uh, stories. Because you're a mom yeah. of two, so that's yeah. an I know that's an automatic avenue for you to go down. Oh my god! Exactly. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Well, Helen, uh, we're going to wrap this up because you've given us so much of your time, and uh, it's been, it's uh, you know, we really w we're looking forward to talking to you about this because it's such a it's such an unusual story, right? We don't hear about a lot of uh, Asian American composers on Broadway. Uh, it's and you really ticked off all the boxes. It's yeah. like great music, great story. You know, the, the, the cast was an amazing cast of American performers of Korean descent. It was like, oh my God, it's like, how can this not, you know, but the, but the, the idea that you were there at the Tony Awards was just like the tip of the iceberg. So for your mom, to say, oh my God, you were there. It's like, th oh wait, that's, that's right. How did you, d what does your mom think about this? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> my mom, like throughout this whole process of my, um, you know, my work in theater in New York, uh, my parents were I'm definitely proud of me, but um, I remember I was featured in the New York Times once a couple years ago and my mom was like, oh, Oh, that's great. Like, it wasn't like super like, <laughs> what? Um, but then there was this like one news outlet in Korea yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that had an article about me. And my mom was like, oh of my gosh, course, you made it. And like she started like sending out to all of her, our relatives and friends. Oh, my God. Um, Your mom and, and my mom sound like they're sisters or that's something. The, that's the Waverly story. It's like, you totally. know, it's like, look at, look at yeah, my daughter. My she daughter. made it. Yeah. it that's the whole idea. That's oh the yeah. whole idea. So have yeah. they finally yeah. now realized how great this yeah. is? Yeah. Okay. So they were like so happy when oh. I told them about the Tony Award nomination. Yeah. Um, and of course, they've them being like so Korean, um, like on the day of the Tonys, like they couldn't stream it from Korea. I mean, they had to like, but they were only looking at like the results that were coming in. <laughs> 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 and then, but yeah, my dad saw, sent me the screenshot being like, this musical seems to be winning all the awards, like Kimberly Akimbo. And I was like, okay, I guess we're just talking about who the winner. Now. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of but, course. Yeah. I mean, it's such a, it's still like such a big win to oh. big, be there and oh to God. have, you know, have started this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like okay. a big milestone. I mean, it's, Huge. it is something that I, it is Huge. a real and big deal. You know what? <laughs> what, what my what, parents what, are always going to be my parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One question. Did your parents get to see K-pop? Did they fly over and yeah. see it? Oh, my good. parents, they just love the show. Like, and that was something that was impressed. Like, you know, my mom is not easily satisfied, but like, <laughs> you know, she, she, they went to see like other shows like Moulin Rouge. And my mom was like, it's, it's no K-pop though. <laughs> you know, it's, she was just like, I love it. She, she, she's like, K-pop is really the best show. Oh, <laughs> like, see, you know, so she's really genuinely proud. That that's great. Yeah, Like you said, it's not easy. Korean parents are not easy, but that that says a lot. That says yeah, a that's lot. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, Helen, it was such a pleasure having you on the show, and I'm just so proud of you um, as a, a fellow Asian woman. Korean, but, um, it's just, you know, I, I hope that you continue to, to do this great work, um, because this is just the beginning. It's, you got so much more <laughs> in you. Um, so keep doing, just keep doing this great work that you're keep doing. doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing yeah, it. Yeah. Just gotta write. Like I'm just, yeah. Back in my, in my writing cave, you know, <laughs> I think the job that I have 99% of the time 
it's not on the red carpet. It's not on, you know, in a production rehearsal. It's like exactly. just me writing and producing music. Yep. And so yeah. I'm just happy to to do that now. And um, yeah, hopefully very soon. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to showcase oh, yeah. another musical very soon. We're yeah. waiting for it. We're waiting for it. And we're also waiting for K-pop to come to LA. So uh, stay tuned everyone for, for that. Uh, hopefully something, something in that realm. Yes. Please yes. talk to our producers. I, yes, we will. We will. Yes, 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 okay. Yes, yes. Helen, thank you so much. And uh, we'll, thank you we'll talk so again much. Soon. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're definitely looking forward to what Helen has in store because she clearly has tons of ideas. She, she, there, there ain't nothing you stop in her. That, oh. that girl looks like she's 17. I know. Oh my God. And it's like, and to know that she's a mom as well. So Two she's kids. being able to to balance what it means to write for Broadway or for a, you know, for a play, for a composition. I know. It's, it's an amazing, again, hats off to all parents out there, especially the moms who have yeah. to carry those little human beings in their bellies. But to, to, to know she has this much life in her, you know, euphemistically saying and yeah. you know, literally and figuratively, it's, it's amazing. an amazing yeah, to, I, to be I, able to tip my hat off to I her. I did love yeah. swapping uh, Korean mom stories about like, how they're <laughs> never satisfied. <laughs> See, they're all cut from the same cloth, I'm telling you. Um, but right? thank it, you it, so it, much, yeah. Helen. Yeah, it was it was great yeah. chatting with her. And so look forward to what she has in and store. And she looked gorgeous at the Tonys. Just Google her oh, at the Tony Awards show and really remember... Did. As she said that 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 theater was the it, in up in Washington Heights was un was not air conditioned, so oh, she's yeah, wearing she that beautiful gown buckets. and and sparkling and and just being you know just it, it's just just well, being she so had the luminous. dewy look, but it's because there was exactly no AC. it was like no it wasn't a hundred degrees in there but yeah but I, the in the in the pictures of of Helen Park and all the, the other other Broadway luminaries, you know, all in concert together was just a beautiful yeah, thing. No, so, and what a, what a role, Tony Award show, right? It's like, thank goodness for the writer strike sometimes because just did away with all the exactly. unnecessariness all the skits and all the, and just focused in on script. the awards. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe they're onto something. Um, yeah. anyway, oh, look, Kelly's like, texting me now let me know when i can <laughs> hop on i don't want to interrupt the recording okay okay well we're almost done all right so as everyone knows by now lemieux is one of our great sponsors of the show lemieux skincare and i actually got a really nice compliment the other day from friends i didn't see in a while and oh. they were like your skin looks amazing. They're Your like, what are you does doing? Look amazing. I was like, I'm not doing it. I thought they meant like, what am I doing? Like, am I getting like facelifts or something? I'm like, I'm not yeah. doing it. I go, oh, wait, I use Lemieux. And I wasn't trying to promote it. I go, no, I, I'm using Lemieux That's what I've been skincare. Using. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they're like, well, your skin looks amazing. I'm like, thank you. You should try Yay! the new sometime. <laughs> but seriously, it was unsolicited. And I, I was able to share with them the great things about Lemieux. But um, the fact that they're our sponsor, of course, we love it. And so we thank always you, want thank to you, do thank a you, segment, Lemieux. Yes. you know, about yeah. wellness or about something maybe, you know, that's related to the topic that we were talking about. Well, with Helen, obviously, we were talking about creativity and music and you know, all kinds of things that inspire us. So we figured maybe right. this segment, we can talk about the ways in which we inspire our own creativity. Well, oh, and, yeah, also, and again, just, just to back up just a, a couple of steps back, it's like, you know, the the, the idea that uh, as women, we're, we're always told to smile a lot, to be, you know, oh, let's see how beautiful you are. And it's like, that's kind of a weapon in, 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 mm. in, in one definition. But I think when we give our friends, our persons who we come into daily contact with, just a compliment with meaning yes. is a real boost of confidence. That's true. And it, it's not only for the receiver, but for the uh, for the giver as well to say, oh, my God, you look good. Or you, you're, there's something radiating about you today. And I think it doesn't cost anything. That's sometimes, so true. you know, it, it does sound a little uh, a little sexist sometimes, but. I, I'd say to to men as well. It's like, oh my God, you're looking very handsome today. It's like it's not an attraction kind of thing. It's just a compliment to that's kind of free. I that's love free that. Ying. Now, that's you know free what, Ying as well. You're so because, right about that because even it, because with strangers, I, I do love it. I, I, I do I do understand the you know the, the the ramifications of throwing out compliments that are unsincere that yeah. are insincere. Right. But when it, when something is like, oh wow. 
May, your hair looks really beautiful today. There's no flyaways. It's just like this beautiful <laughs> crown of silver. And it, it, it just, it just, it's just, it makes one feel good and makes yeah. the other feel good. And it's like, that's a really great place to start. Well, so I just wanted what? to mention no, that because I, I think we should in terms of wellness, we can help each other feel well. I think we should stay on this because I think you're absolutely right. Even with strangers, if a stranger yeah. says something to you that's really like unexpected and nice, it's, it's yeah. like, wow, you know, they didn't have to do that. And they I've done that. Do that. I've yeah. done that with strangers saying like, oh my gosh, I love your glasses or, you know, whatever I notice. Yeah. And you can see the reaction yeah. is like of such surprise because our society now is sort of becoming less and less that way. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. In terms of giving and, you know, just sort of being open with each other. Just freely giving, just yeah. freely giving. I, I, and I understand, of course, you know, if, it, if it, a compliment can go further down the line in a bad way in, in terms of like catcalling or advances. But I think we're savvy enough, but we need to protect those who feel a little bit more vulnerable. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. If it's if it's just from from a male to a female or the opposite or from a female to another female or male to male male to male, that's another thing. It's like it's like bro, yeah, <laughs> and that's a stereotype. But again, it's the power of just being able to give something freely, yeah, and you, you receive something back in return. And I think that's a, that that is a part of wellness. I mean, I know it's complicated and complex, but. I just wanted to say that to you because it, I could see it, you know, you, you, you brought it up because it meant something. It felt like something to you to say, oh, your skin looks great because, oh, really? It is like, <laughs> let me clap back. It's like, I don't know what I've been doing, but I yeah. have been using Lemieux. It's yeah. like, yeah, let's, 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 let's call it out and say thank you I know. For, I know. for giving me that chance to say thank you to Lemieux and, and, and to you. You do look Oh, uber radiant. Oh, thank you. But no, it's it's so funny how um, the, a lot of us have now been conditioned to be so surprised when we get yeah. a compliment or some someone says something nice because we live in a world that is not so nice some, uh, oftentimes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it is sort of like, wow, why are we so like taken aback saying, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I, I really, no, I don't. But also yeah. we're, 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 we're supposed to be modest yes. and demure. Right. Yeah. But then right. it's like, wow, you really made me feel good. It's like, yeah, you know, you really made me feel good. You Thank you. Good. And, it, yeah. and it's just gratitude as well. well and it maybe, exercises that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe this should be our Lemieux challenge for this segment. Is that <laughs> all of you who are listening and watching today, go out and give someone a very simple, genuine compliment say yeah, something nice yeah and see, see it's what a, your happens. random act of kindness yes, for today exactly yeah. i like that i like that because i think kindness can go so far so far so far yeah and like so you said far. it's free it's free, it's free. Yeah. and it, it, it's freeing yeah. you know it, it just really does release just that 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 uh, unexpected sense of joy yeah it's like Exactly. Well, thank I know. You. <laughs> I know. Exactly. It's really, really nice, even for that moment. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and for those of you who want glowing skin, just try a Lemieux. <laughs> yeah. But thank you, Lemieux, as always, to, for being our thank sponsor. You, and thank you to everyone for listening and watching this episode. And again, Kelly couldn't join, but you know, don't worry, she'll be on our next episode. So, yes. um, until we'll see then, you on the flip side. Yes, everyone. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, give us a rating on the podcast platforms wherever you listen to us. Uh, we would appreciate it. So until next time, everyone, see ya. Thank you. See ya. Bye.